Good morning. Welcome to Sports Radio 1310 The Ticket. George DiGiani Train Station Fitness Show at 6.50 a.m. And on the show with me today, Dr. Jeremy Webster and also David Vobora. Good to be back. Former NFL Seahawks champion, I'm going to call you. <laughs> so you brought a topic to us today, David, that I don't think I can do us justice if I were to promote it like I normally do. I want to hear it from your mouth and your passion about why this topic fits within uh, the realm of everything that you do. And I know why it is, but I want to hear from, from, from you about how what we're discussing today helps create the success of the current people you have yeah. in, your, yeah. in your, uh, your daily life and your program. And we'll talk about what that program is in a moment. Yeah, no, I'm excited because a lot of people train for something. I'm going to train to have a flatter stomach. I'm going to train for this 5K, right? Mm -hmm. But today we're going to actually talk about how the training can actually create or reveal purpose, right? It's the idea that, yeah, I don't really want to do that really hard thing at the gym, even though I know it offers me the biggest return on my time and the biggest success in what my goals are. Even exercise in general. Amen. Perfect because metaphor, the, right? Right, yeah. Life is tough. Usually, our biggest opportunities for growth are in what scares us. So how do we advance toward fear, right? What's the paradox of like, oh, I mean, I know this is going to hurt, but I know it's also exactly what I need to do because I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Scary moment, right? How do we advance toward fear? So I think there's, a, there's, a, there's maybe more than what I'm going to suggest. There may be more than two mindsets, but you have one mindset that wants to advance toward fear for success, whatever success is to them. But then you may have another mindset, audience, if you will, that doesn't want to advance toward fear, even though they're intelligent enough to recognize that there's benefit, uh, let's say the other side of the rainbow, if you will. So is there a way of talking to the people that say, well, hold on, I don't want to advance toward fear to get them to think that that they could or sh not should there is no should but is there a oh well, here, here's a better way to ask it is there a is there a way to motivate people to want to advance toward fear that's a better question yeah i think in when we're uncomfortable it's typically because there's something on the line like failure or looking stupid right like but to me um competing whether that's competing inside of a gym or in, in other phases of your life that that competition is testing yourself and so it, it may be with a barbell or it may be, you know, in, in a courtroom as a lawyer, but everybody at some point decides whether they're going to go ahead and test what their, what their skills are. And what I'm saying is, even if you're the lawyer and you don't really typically spend much time in the gym, getting you in a gym and strengthening the toughness, the resilience, the, 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 the things that it takes to come into the gym when you don't want to do it, it's going to make you a better lawyer. It's going to make you a better wife it's going to make you a better mother it's going to make all of those things because now suddenly you you've learned through the sweat it's this idea that how do i how do i want to work out well i know that it's a lot of pain involved and there's there's good pain right so there's pain that's fatiguing and it's it's refining me and my spirit so that when i do the next thing in business that i don't really want to do it seemed a little bit easier so that reminds me of the book webster that I've mentioned probably now three or four times. And I think, David, we mentioned it last time mm -hmm. by Dr. Carol Dweck called Mindset. Yep. Right? Yep. I still so, need to read that. So, yeah, it's, I still it's, need to read it's, that. It's a great book because if you're in a relationship or you have your own personal struggles with advancing toward fear, um, business, if you're an athlete, and you have a fixed mindset, it's often hard to advance toward anything that you say you want in life because you're in a fixed mindset compared to people who are in a growth mindset. And this fits within that part of the show as well. Yeah. Jeremy's nodding. He's <laughs> nodding. He's, he didn't know we were going deep this morning. You mean he's nodding yeah. asleep? <laughs> it's not quite so yet. This is, this is our trial run. <laughs> is this on? Sure. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'd like to do? We haven't. I don't. I don't think we've done this with you on the show yet, Dave. Uh, we should probably take some feedback from people uh, who may are have people up right now. They're, 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 last week they were <laughs> right. Yeah. They were calling in early. Um, some feedback from people who may want to advance yeah. toward their fear and what that looks like and how to help. Like so, because in your daily life, what you do with your clients is you help people advance toward those fears to break through that. But yeah. you also have a mindset of people 
wounded warriors yep. that have a focused intention and it doesn't matter if they're missing limbs or not, they're tougher and or braver, because yeah. it's not necessarily the same thing, we know that, and I want you to expand upon that in a moment. Yeah. They're tougher and or braver than the person who has, let's say, the, the charmed life. Yeah. They have all their limbs in health and, and go sure. to work every day. Sure. They get to do X, whatever that is. Yeah, I think, here's what we're really saying. Uh, training can be therapy, okay? So the same way going to the barber shop and talking about your problems while you're getting your hair cut can be therapy, right? So let's just look at the psychological impact, right? That we know that we're releasing good positive endorphins, chemical changes to help with our mood, right? Yeah. Serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, different things that are happening that are positive when we work out. But think about it this way. What part of you, what untapped gears have you not recognized because you're not willing to push yourself in a physical capacity? Mm. And how does that translate to the rest of your life? To me, um, you know, if you're on your deathbed and you're looking around and around your bed staring down at you is all the, the potential that you left on the table. Mm -hmm the things you didn't do, mm -hmm. that's heavy. And, that, and that's what I'm saying is, is these people that I'm, I have had the blessing to be around daily, they all recognize that, hey, I might look different, I might, I might be a little bit different than I used to be, but that doesn't mean I, cannot, I can't continue to pursue a better version of myself. And so, you know, we, we can have hard days but no bad days sure. at my gym, and, and that's challenges. just an attitude. Yeah. And that's a, that's a lifestyle. And that, that, that's what I'm saying is whether it's the gym, Maybe it's the library, whatever that place is for you. You got to find it, but it, usually it's it's around having to go through something that sucks mm. that you get to pay off. And what you're saying is is these things can translate to completely different parts of your life. So, yeah. for instance, if you were able to overcome a workout that you maybe were scared to do because you thought maybe you couldn't handle it, maybe it was too difficult. Empowered. Something like that, and then that could translate to to another part of your life. Say, yes. for instance, in in my world. Something that scared me to death was public speaking initially. Mm. You would think, you know, I've now been on the radio over 300 times. Well, he's a good public speaker. No. <laughs> first, the first time I came on here, I was a nervous wreck. Yeah, his leg was shaking. The whole, <laughs> the whole desk was moving around. What is, what are you, it earthquake? Was what is that? It was awful. <laughs> and, and still, even when I go into different, different medium, if it's not, if it's not the radio that right. where I'm comfortable right. now, yeah. I still get really nervous. But I've learned to just mm. say, I don't care. I'm going to embrace that. I know I'm nervous, but I'm going to do it anyway. Sure. So something like going through this type of training can help in different parts of life like that. So you know, if I can overcome this, I can overcome that. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. It well, doesn't one work the, the other way. One, one of the things that uh, <clears throat> Dr. Dweck talked about in the book, <clears throat> referring to that again, was if you were to try more, the success aside, if you were to try at doing more things that were uncomfortable, and you were to add all of that up, you would have more knowledge and success than if you weren't to try at all. Yeah. And so that really makes sense for people who are afraid to fail, because yeah. that's basically what this book is if you have a fixed mindset. Yeah. You're afraid to look silly, or you're afraid to fail and not attain that goal. So for people who are trying to lose 100 pounds and they tell their friends about it, or are afraid to tell their friends because they're afraid to fail, yep. they never get anywhere. But if you tell your friends and you lose 30 pounds compared to not doing it at all, yep. you've gained success. Yep. So I've got a challenge for you, mm -hmm. and I'm going to open the phones up after I, 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 I'll, I'll mention the number first is 888-787-1310. If you would like to call and challenge any one of us, particularly Dave, about how to find that place in time, place and time, not in time, to nurture yourself, to be introspective, if you will. To, to, to then move in the direction of your goals. And 888-787-1310, and, uh, here's my challenge. To, to both, I'll open it up to both of you. Female, mm -hmm. mother, mm -hmm. two, three children. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work, but works her ass off. Yep. Okay? Gets up in the morning, starts her day with taking care of the kids, whatever that is. Cooking breakfast, making sure they're out of bed, clothes, la uh, 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 lunch, Put all of that day in the life of a female mother who works really hard together, whatever all of that is. And she's saying, Dave, you're telling me I need to find time for myself to move and ad or advance in the direction of something that's uncomfortable. My life is already <laughs> challenged and uncomfortable. What do you say to this person? Yeah. First of all, God bless you, because you have the hardest job in the world, all right? And I can tell you that... I'd rather be in training camp and daily doubles than to do what, what George just described because it is hard and I know you're tired and I know that um, you know, preaching to somebody to say, hey, you need to go out and go 
put yourself in an uncomfortable situation and sweat a little bit. I think the release to me would be about finding an opportunity to break away from the, the, the typical rhythms that are stressful, right? Just the stress responses. Um, I think the, the ability to go out, whether it's a walk, right? Um, maybe maybe you, you start by just getting out and walking and it's your sanctuary becomes a safe haven. And but you begin to say, hey, look, I can go a little bit further or I can go up these hills now. Or, hey, now I actually feel like I've centered uh, this, this routine in my, in my walk and now I'm going to push one of those kids mm. or, or, or whatever it could be. I mean, I just children learn by example. So yes. we say that the family that eats and exercises together stays together. Yep, absolutely. There's a piece of this, this being about you, mm. but it's also about you removing yourself from the typical, from, mm. from the routines of the norm. You know, I, as, as a gym owner and a trainer, you'd think I'd be working out all the time. We talked about this right. earlier. It's like, it's actually harder for me than ever. And, and like George, you said, when you're on the training room floor all day, the last thing you want to do at the end of the day is train. Mm. But I know that I need to do it because when I go home, I'm not going to be the best dad because mm. uh, I'm going to have stress, sure. right? I got to release that also. Uh, so, so does it have to be, hey, the, the house mom that says next year I'm going to climb Everest? Well, what I tell you is if it excites you, pursue it. So how I define success is using your gifts and talents in a way that, that benefits others or people in your circumstance, in your, in your sphere, if you will, in your community, around you, those that love you. Um, but you're using those gifts and talents to do something that excites you. And the way I kind of think about this is what, when you look into the future and you see yourself 10 years from now, are you gonna be proud of what you've done for the past decade? Yeah. If, if raising your children is your fulfillment, mm -hmm. maybe, that, maybe the answer is yes. Sure. But what if that's just your duty and you're a wonderful mother but you want to achieve something else on top of that. You want to write that book. You want to, you want to climb Everest yeah. as an extreme example, of course, which is... Well, it's, it starts really with introspection, sure. right? And, and then it's, it's about that's, action. That's a fear. That, that is a challenge for many people Ooh. in itself, is being introspective yeah. and discovering something that maybe you have suppressed for so many years, yeah. and you, you, you start to become emotional about it. Sure. And, and, you know, we're not talking to females here. We're talking to guys also, yeah. because guys are usually the toughest nut to crack. You yeah. know, it's, it's the football player, the tough mentality, yeah. you know, rah, 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 and, and, and hanging out with your buddies and having fun. But how does that show up in the rest of your life? Well, a lot of times that's when we start to unplug or, or we pause for a second. Like, there's just something about pace that we try to push, 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 so we don't have to stop right. and, and actually look at ourselves. Like, how scary is it to truly know yourself? But then at the same time, how scary is it to potentially show yourself to others? Let them see for who you are. Because then what happens is you say, you open your mouth. You're vulnerable and you say, all right, guys, I'm gonna, I need to lose 100 pounds. Well, now, now your circle has the ability to hold you accountable, which is even more scary mm -hmm. because now I'm held to this standard that I said I was going to do. So introspection, evaluate, right? self-scout, look at yourself, decide where you want to go. And then I say, you know, maybe the first step of advancing toward fear is to make your goals public. Mm. Would be to open your mouth, tell somebody about it, tell somebody that you know is there and, and, and will support you, and someone you trust. I think that's really important. We had Kim Legeis on the show, and she lost over a hundred pounds, and she talks about how she has to limit time with certain quote unquote friends because yeah. those friends want to sabotage her, <laughs> and, and it makes a lot of sense. You know, that these people are not coming along with you, so they're working against you. It's the same thing in business. You can have the most talented employee. But if they don't fit with the culture and they don't advance along or come along and move along in the direction of your vision, your goals, yeah. then they're working against you, right? Yeah. And so uh, that's important to, to, to consider. If you're a, a, someone who wants to do more of what Dave is talking about, first I want to give your website out. It's adaptivetrainingfoundation.org. You can go and look at his website. But it's more than just training physically. There's that, that, that psychological cons, uh, component that we're just speaking of today. And then to expand upon something that Jeremy said um, about the female who wants to have success as a mother, I want to I wanna talk about what that quote-unquote success is being a mother because there are so many mothers and, and or fathers that put their entire life into their children, but are they doing a good job? And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll expand upon that coming up next. It's going to raise the hair on the back of someone's neck and probably make them angry at some level, and that's fine. But I'd like for you to call us and voice that. 888-787-1310. It's 705-SPORTS-RADIO-1310-THE-TICKET. 714-SPORTS-RADIO-1310-THE-TICKET. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show. Here with Dr. Jeremy Webster next to me and also David Vibora, former NFL football player from Seahawks. His website 
adaptivetrainingfoundation.org. And we're talking about not necessarily pushing you past your fears, but having you move in the direction of your fears to get the outcome you say you want outwardly when you tell people, I need to lose, I need to, need to is another, that's a whole other topic, need to, saying need to and being hard on yourself. I should, could, need to, but I'd like to have this outcome. Well, how do you have it unless you're uncomfortable? So um, before we went to commercial, I said, I'd like to expand upon something Dr. Webster mentioned when he talked about a female's success might be raising her children, female and, and male, but you know, there are a lot of females who are at home and they're there all day, and so we say female. But I'd like to back up or back into it a little bit and say, let's define the success of a mother and children. Because if you're an overweight mother who doesn't take care of herself and just eats on the go and eats bad things and yada, 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 you're not exercising, your children learn by example, not by what you say. So if you're smoking and doing drugs and you're not, you're not exercising, you can't tell your children not to do it. They're, they're, they learn by example, so there's all of that, right? But if you're not doing those things and you're just not exercising, you're not paying attention to your health, then how are you being a good mother? You say, well, and this is where it really makes mothers angry because they say, well, I, I, I'm, I put my entire life into my children. But what you're doing is you're putting your entire life in your children and nurturing them in the way that you want to nurture them compared to making yourself uncomfortable, which can make them grow. Yeah. The so by, what are you by example. Say, well, the yeah. leading by example can be, can be a huge component of this. It's not only do you love them, do you, do you hug them, do you hold them, do you, do you make them do their homework. Right, but is that but enough? Are, are they looking up to you? Is there a reason for them to look up to you right. and want to, wanting to emulate you and what you do and become what you are? I'm going through this in the house right now with our two-year-old. It's like we did this thing. We said, hey, the bottle fairy's coming because the babies need the bottles. Now we're trying to get her off the bottle, right? Well, I'll tell you what, from a parental standpoint, this sucks, right? Because <laughs> getting her off, it's like potty training, right? I mean, it, it sucks because... She doesn't want to do it, and so we're making her do something that we know is best for her sure. long run. So, like, how many times can we take that same uh, framework and apply it to our life? And I, to me, George, measured bit of success is, is after I've had the kids all day is that they're still alive. <laughs> that's, hey, are they breathing? I won, right? Hey, wife, here they're still alive. You know, that's a really, really good point because I venture to guess if we're talking to mothers now, they might say, George, screw you and exercise and all this stuff you're talking about. Yeah, I've got a little weight to lose and I'm not in shape, but at the end of the day, my children are safe. They may take that, 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 that mentality. And it's not necessarily a bad one. It's saying if you wake up and you live for your children, your husband isn't even in the game anymore because your mentality is focusing on your children. Part of that focus, here comes the should and the needs, right, should be making them well-rounded and healthy. And so you wonder why they're sick several times a year, or maybe you're sick several times a year. Are you giving them snacks and all that other stuff that they don't need to have? And even if it's in the house, you know, you say, well, that's what they're going to eat. Well, when did a child get a, a, a four, four years old, get a driver's license to go pick up food up? Yeah. You know, I, I think the training piece for the mom that is tired and exhausted is about empowering her. Um, because she, she deserves this confidence. And lots of sure. times she's constantly pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. <clears throat> Well, this is a chance for her to pour into herself and then also be poured into. So getting a mom involved with whether it's other moms or just in another piece of community with Not other, other people. moms who enable you to stay right where you are. Right. But other people that are pushing it, they're saying, hey, look, because because what has changed is the this female approach to training. Like before it was about being toned. You heard that mm -hmm. word a lot. Yeah. Well, now it's about chicks being buff, like the buff, the fit chick is is actually like more <laughs> muscular than some dudes now. But it, it's sexy. I mean, it is. There, there's... Not to me. I don't like a girl who can kick my ass. Well, no. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. There are degrees. Talking. Come on now. There is. Let's there is. But, but that balancing point, the, the fact is you're empowered. And I think you can go overboard, no yeah. doubt. But I think there's a piece of that woman that says, yeah, I, I'm, even if it's small improvements toward her goals, she's becoming empowered by them. And then the more that she gets harder, the harder it is, the bigger the reward, the bigger the empowerment is. There's the growth and, mindset. I mean, we have to keep in mind that the three of us have that growth mindset. Mm -hmm. And we may be speaking to people who have a fixed mindset that don't want to leave their comfort zone. Sure. They, and, and what is the definition of a fixed mindset? Someone who doesn't want change, they want things to come easy, yeah. put them on a pedestal, don't challenge them. And so when we're talking to people with a fixed mindset, what I've learned is 
it's important to speak in, in bits, if you will, or on bite-size chunks to say something that you just mentioned, Dave. By making small advancements or getting small rewards, it helps to bring success. And by bringing that success, we can take on a bigger challenge. Unfortunately, there's too many people with a fixed mindset that say, I want yesterday's results. Yeah. Today's not good enough. Yeah. Tomorrow's way too far in the future. I want it yesterday. And I think in Dave's verbiage, maybe start to talk about people with a fixed mindset of they, that they've embraced comfort, like overly embraced comfort. That it's too easy to be comfortable, and if you if you embrace that too much, you're kind of running away from fear, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think it's accumulative too. So so each time you push through this this threshold, this this fear, that which scares you, you your known capacity, and you raise the bar a little bit. There's this idea that well, now I'm going to have to do it again. The last time it hurt really bad. And yeah, it's probably going to be harder each time, but what people forget is it's accumulative. So this idea that you get knocked, knocked down seven times, but you get up eight, you're going to be stronger each time, right? And you're going to be stronger each time you go to that place and you say, man, I don't want to. There's nothing fun about this, but I know at the other side of this, something will change. And something you've mentioned several times now, so maybe we can get into, into a little bit more depth, is this this idea of community, you, you mentioned the mm. word tribe, and you, you also kind of alluded to the fact that that might be the first thing that you need to do when you're running towards fear, yeah. is to make yourself vulnerable and tell somebody that this is what I want to do or this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. We're wired for this. We're wired to be a part of a community, a tribe. And there, I've been on a lot of teams, okay? I can tell you what a team is, and, and, and a team is a roster. But a tribe is different, because at some point the tribe needs what would be presumably the weakest link, the less talented. And when that happens, now we have a, a fully functional community to pull that person to along. Pull that person along. Right. And then at some point, they're going to pull the people that are stronger in some other regard. <clears throat> and so um, this is, yes, there's accountability. That's a factor. But it's almost like then you're not thinking about the suck. <laughs> you're just going forward with it with others because, you know, like it or not, misery does love company. Mm. And, and then all of a sudden you're talking about it and you, don't, you frame yourselves against what you're about to do. So it's almost like this inanimate object, this thing you're moving, this heavy thing or this, this hill you're climbing, suddenly becomes this team atmosphere, this tribe atmosphere. And then the tribe decides to go, hey, um, we're going to do this together. And the power that sweating together, you know, I, I said this on break, going to coffee once a week with a friend, you have a friendship. You know, going to the gym or working together, going through something together three times a week or even just once a week and pushing each other and borderline throwing up together, <laughs> then that... That right there, that's going to be a different type of friendship. You're going to talk about different stuff. You might not be talking during the training, but right. afterwards, I, there's going to be some type of galvanized unity. So I don't want to turn the females off with the whole throwing up together part. <laughs> I think we need to pull them in a little bit and, and, and make it inviting to say that if you're in the gym with a friend, the friend pushes you. They don't want to sit there and talk about their problems that they had with their husband and so on throughout the day. That's not a friend. That's not someone pushing you. That's someone holding you back and enabling you. All right, so if you're in the, in the gym or in this type of exercise environment, because that's the type of show this is, it's a health and wellness show, you know, either you're pushing them or they are pushing you, and if they're not, then, then maybe you reserve that friend for coffee and you find someone else to help you in the gym and help you be accountable. Because when you look at the law of reflection, it makes you realize that you have whatever qualities you see in others, and they're manifested within uh, your own values right according to your own values so learning to reflect and move toward the desired outcome takes that bravery yeah that we talked about yeah. right confidence and bravery yeah, there's, and, a, there's right. a quote that says you can be comfortable or you can be brave mm -hmm. but you cannot be both and, and, and now I, I think you can be both at certain points but if you're really striving for something right I had a coach who used to say you're getting better you're getting worse there's no staying the same this idea of training for maintenance that's a joke. Uh -huh. I, I, don't, I don't buy into that at all. Like, hey, I'm going to go to the gym and just maintain where I'm at. Uh -huh. You're going to slowly get worse sure. every single time because you're going with the mindset of comfort. Mm -hmm. You're going to mind for just, hey, consistently I've been here. I'm just going to stay here. But there's no, that's, that's no metaphor. So people, let's talk about osmosis for a second. People want to just mm -hmm. go into the gym and get results. Sure. Okay. Um, I can tell you that you're not going to get results by, by just looking at the weights. Uh, or looking at the treadmill, but or using a two-pound weight and true. expecting a small burn or no burn at all to help you advance. Demand. There has to be a demand. The yeah. demand is, is typically uncomfortable. So for me, it's it's uh, there is osmosis though around the environment you put yourself in. So I'll tell you right now, our, our for-profit uh, that, that runs with the nonprofit. So Performance Vault is my gym. It's the location. Adaptive Training Foundation is the nonprofit. So the Wounded Warriors are training alongside people that are paying for their sessions. 
Well, there's a piece of these guys that are the, the warriors that is, is so valuable to these, these for-profit clients because they're getting their best training sessions when they're near these guys. Because they see what they're, what they're going through and they see how they're pushing it beyond where they're comfortable and how they have every excuse in the book to say, no, nah, it's too hard or no, I don't want to do it. I but think we need more, more females there, more mothers there. That we're, we're not talking to the female or the mother necessarily today. We're talking to everybody who's not moving in the direction of their goals and how that shows up in your life. Even if you're a salesperson, yeah. if you're not as successful as you want to be, are you also not as fit as you'd like to be? It's all intertwined and sure. it has to do with how you push yourself and feel uncomfortable or lack thereof. It's effort. It's effort. And we have, like, I, I have this amazing house mom that's, that's from Forney. Uh, she comes in, and she's like mama bear, right? She comes in, and she's loving all these guys. But then she gets on, on a bike, and she gets after it. And I promise you, I've been around where I've just heard guys say, man, look at Leanne over here. I mean, she's pushing it like she's going to the Tour de France. And is she ever going to get Pete in a, you know, in a triathlon? No. Um, but she's competing for that hour on that day for herself. For herself. And that effort is everything. Now, now, she's a mother, you said. How many children do you have? She's got two kids. How old? Two kids. She's probably 50, maybe late 40s. How, no, how old are the kiddos? Uh, the they're kids grown. are older now. They're yeah, grown. the kids are the, you know, late teens. So I, think, I wonder if that's some of the mentality that, that females have. You know, I'll do this. I'll do and it not, later. Yeah, I'll do it later. And then later might winds up being a lot harder. Mm -hmm. And then you're also in, a, oh, yeah. in that fixed way of thinking, so later sometimes doesn't come. Yeah. So coming up next, I know, Dave, you want to talk about sweating together and also the psychology of body language all three of us have seen uh amy cuddles uh cuddy cuddy cuddy's um ted talk about body language and how body language can raise your testosterone increase your confidence and they've proven this scientifically that having a different body language yet without changing anything else can make you more confident going before going into a meeting or having a conversation or anything that's uncomfortable, even going to exercise. Right, even reducing your stress hormones. Reducing your stress hormones. So let's talk more about that with Dave Vibora. Coming up next, it's 726 Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. 731 Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. George DiGiani, Train Station Fitness Show, talking with David Vibora, former NFL Seahawks player in the studio today. His... Website is adaptivetrainingfoundation.org. Dr. Jeremy Webster is with us also, and we're having a little fun on YouTube watching the uh, what's it called? Flyboard. Water jetpack flyboard. flyboard yeah. If you need to overcome your fears, just do that. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I that, know a lot of people who would be scared to death to even. I won't jump that. out of a plane or anything like that, and, and roller coasters scare me more than sharks. Um, I'm, I can't just can't do it. I mean, I remember I even tried again when I was probably 40 years old. And I got so sick, it's just, I, I can't, and I, I think I was on bumper cars or something goofy like that. Anyway, but this thing, these, these water jetpacks or flyboards, whatever, that I would do that. That is cool. It's the first time I've ever seen them. Yeah. So, uh, so we're talking today about sweating together, staying together, pushing beyond fears, and, and getting to a point mentally for those who don't even try to push beyond a fear, to get beyond the fear of the fear of moving forward. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really, really important. Yeah. And so, Dave, did we already tackle all the sweating together conversation? Uh, we mentioned what the tribe looks like and the ability to galvanize these relationships and, and, and put roots toward, you know, who we are friends with yeah. through working hard and, and, and actually suffering together. What well, concerns me, though, about that is I think we have three highly testosterone guys here in the room. We're talking about tribes and sweating together and working hard. And I don't want us to intimidate women. And I think that's happening, and that really concerns me because we really want to invite them in. Yeah. Well, and say so you create your own tribe, but make sure it's a tribe that advances you. Well, th there's boot camps, right? So sure. the, the term boot camp was created, you know, out of the military, and it was it was about suffering together to create strong strong relationships. Sure. Um, and so with these mini boot camps that are on the weekends or that you go to for a gym atmosphere is no different. I mean, aside like, obviously the work is different, but to me it's about trying to get people to go through some suffering so that they come out of it with this relationship and they're coming back more for the group than they are necessarily the sure. training, typically. Um, and I think that part is is where a female can really um, find the right group. Again, that George, you mentioned earlier, they're not just gossiping or, or chatting. And there's a social component, but typically it's a before or after. Like when the work is happening, let's be focused on the work uh, because that's where the typically you're going to get the biggest results. And my question about this is you mentioned how 
sometimes there's the weak link, and that's who gets the most benefit of it. What about the alpha of the group? Does the alpha get benefit from being in this, or is the alpha the type of person that can go and be the lone wolf and do great by themselves? I think the alpha is because the alpha is going to push themselves no matter what. I think so. I think the alpha naturally, that type A, does that um, and may set the bar. But that's why I like training toward your weakness, too. you got to remember, so some of this is, is individualistic. Um, you know, in fitness, typically, we talk about focusing on the self. I would tell the alpha, how can they better the group by being the alpha? By being themselves. I'm not trying to tell them to be something that they're not, but have, have the mindset of what they can do for the group. And, and through that, what the group can do for them. Because typically, the alpha is so self-focused and tunnel vision. Um, but then, then what can the group actually help them to point out their weaknesses? Because, again, this is about doing what you don't want to do. This is about the, you know, where you don't want to go, you grow. That, that, that's the big concept here. And that's, a, that's, again, that's a metaphor for all life. It just happens to be that we're talking about training today. And if you happen to be the person who's the exact opposite of the alpha, is there anything that we can do to push ourselves or, or make ourselves more like that alpha? Yeah, I think that, that that's, you talk about fake it till you make it. And Amy Cuddy's TED Talk talks a lot about fake it till you make it, fake it till She kept saying to herself, I don't belong here when she was at Princeton and Harvard. Well, well let, let's people let let's let people in on that. Yeah. Let's not just yeah, that was really powerful. Yeah, so yeah, powerful tell people speaking. because we've all seen this YouTube uh, TED talk with sure. Amy Cuddy. Yep. Just just talk about her for a moment and the profound uh, studies that she brought forth that yep. let us know that even if we're not trying through sweating, we have the ability to grow immediately. Yeah, so she's a social psychologist, and she specifically was studying body language, right? Not in the scientific effects and the psychosocial effects. Um, her story was unique because in her first or second year of college, um, she was involved in a terrible car crash. She woke up out of a coma a month or two later, and she was, you know, unenrolled in school. And what she'd always known about herself was she was smart. Her talents is what she relied on with her brain, okay? And when suddenly she woke up from this coma and, and her IQ went down two standard deviations, who am I without this? This is what David Vavora went through. This is what these warriors go through. Who am I when I suddenly, I, I don't have a purpose or right. I don't know what my next step is. Right, it's like a mother, let's go back to the mother for a moment. Yeah. If your identity is your children, then you have the empty nest syndrome. Yeah. They leave the house, who are you now? And then you have to re-identify your who you are and your relationship with your husband if you have a husband. Sure. And, and who are, who are you too if if you just you, you, you want to work out, you just flat out can't find time to do right. it. You know, and then you start to lose like, well, my body doesn't look this way, so then my confidence suffers and then my it's a it's a vicious cycle. Sure. So what, what Amy was talking about again was she got out of this 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 hole, this coma, she had to work twice as hard to have five years of school to get her degree. Then she she got an advisor at Princeton take a chance on her mm -hmm. and, and put her in to get her MBA. Um, and when that happened, she felt like constantly she wasn't worth it. She felt like, I'm not supposed to be here, I'm not supposed to be here. And, and one day that advisor, when she went into her office and she said, I'm going to quit, she said, no, you're not. I took a chance on you. And she said, you're going to fake it till you make it. Okay? And so that was her motto, fake it till you make it. You know? and, and what that teacher also told her was about this body language, how you admit yourself. You know, act like you're supposed to be there. People are, one, going to believe you. Okay? And two, you're going to actually begin to believe yourself. So over the next, you know, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, ten years, Amy suddenly she went through Harvard Business School and, and then got her PhD, and now she's teaching at Harvard. And one day a student comes into her um, office and says, I'm not supposed to be here. And this is where it all became sure. real. Because one, Amy realized, wow, at some point, I actually began to believe that I was supposed to be here. I stopped asking myself that question or telling myself I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. So that was the first transformative piece. But the second was she, she had this opportunity to now help this girl. And she didn't say fake it till you make it. She said fake it till you become it. But what's really interesting for people listening right now is you may have heard fake it till you make it, but there's, there's, there are actual things you can do right now listening to the show that take two minutes, literally two yeah. minutes, that help you become it literally become it so you can move in the direction. And I guess we could have started with this part of the show in the beginning. I didn't consider this, Dave, where if we discussed what these techniques are yeah. to help people who don't want to or are too afraid to move into... Toward fear. Toward fear, this can help you do that immediately because you get out of who you are, yeah. it, who, you, who your fears are. And so some of those techniques are, and this was so cool, she did, they performed some studies in the wild, even with people, and one blind person who became successful at X, whatever X was. And every single time they became successful, 
they raise their arms up in the air like they're a champion. Whether you're a football player or you're a track runner at the end of the track and you win and your arms are up in the air. The blind person who never saw anybody ever do that did that also. So we knew this primordially that this is what we do to show confidence success. And she said that if you were to establish or create certain movements or, or not certain movements, a certain stance, a pose, for a minimum of two minutes. I think it was minimum. Was it minimum or maximum? Yeah, I can't remember. Something like that. Two minutes that you would, web, what Dr. Yeah. Webster said, decrease your cortisol level, your stress levels, increase your testosterone, and feel more confident. And the studies are there to and prove. And perform better. And perform better. Yeah, perform better in big. anything that you want yeah, to do. You, so, so you perform better because you're more confident, right? If you're not yeah. as confident, you don't perform better. You're yes. more, you know, people who have a lot of accidents where they're tripping over a rock, a hair that's in their way, people who are just like clumsy like that are often not confident people. If you raise your confidence, you become more comfortable in movements, in exercise, in life, in what you say right before a meeting. And some of those, some of those poses were, just think about the su person who's creating success right now, who has a successful moment. Arms above them, or hands on your hips. Yeah, the superhero. The superhero, yeah. like Superwoman. Wonder Woman, Wonder, 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 yeah, Wonder, yeah, Wonder Woman pose. Yeah. And it was real interesting because they proved Beyond the shadow yeah. of a doubt, you increase your testosterone, your confidence, and lower your stress levels within two minutes. And I always think when I when I hear people talk about this, I just think it's psycho babble, just a bunch <laughs> of BS. There's no way this yeah. this is real. Yeah. But they measured stuff. They measured testosterone levels yeah. before and after. They measured cortisol levels before and after. And an exact mimic the, the change mimicked you going from who you were to more like the alpha male yeah. or the alpha female or the alpha gorilla mm. in, the, in the wild. That's what their levels are. They have higher testosterone and lower cortisol. Right. So they can project strength, do dominance. strength and dominance, right. but also they can control the situation because the stress isn't, isn't too much for them. Mm. The cortisol isn't too much for them to where it makes or reduces their ability to to project I think well, it's I think all the fear right. fear is what they're trying to uh, so you know so really yeah exactly so, tackling fear exactly and to me um, they, they're trying to to emit themselves in a way um, that their stress cortisol levels low uh, so that they, they're in a stressful situation or reaction there's a fight or flight moment they're ready for that and they're wired for that and yeah. so uh, you know you may you may have never ran into a bear in the wild and you may never but what we're saying here is What's your bear in your everyday life? Like, where can you puff your chest up a little bit? Where can you be the peacock that fans out? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it and doesn't then, mean, I just want to interject because what, you said, what Jeremy, Jeremy was saying is, it doesn't mean if you're the alpha male, you have more confidence that you're going to run over people. No, you're not just, a bully. No, no, no. That, that's, yeah, there's no it's bullying. Difference. It's yeah. a complete different. It's somebody that you're looking up to that, that, that says, when, when the other people looking at them says, I like them. They, I can tell they're going to be successful. They're going to be good at what they're doing. Yeah. I want to. Emulate. I want to be like them. Right. There's a difference in confidence and arrogance, right? right? And, and arrogance, arrogance usually comes from fear, right? And exactly, exactly. And, and the fear in a negative connotation, right? Because sure. you're trying to now put something out because you, you don't want to be vulnerable. Sure. We're talking about tackling fear, fear in your vulnerability, so that it offers you growth. And so, you know, the, the bodybuilder that's puffed chest out, you know, he's got a complex because he's trying to get so big to overcompensate for something else. Potentially, maybe that's his fear. Uh, his and then image backstage, is they go backstage and cry. Yeah, right. They wad up in a ball, they curl up. <laughs> it's not uncommon. Have you ever seen the backstage stuff on bodybuilding competitions? They do that, man. Yeah. They go back and they, they, they get together and suck, suck thumbs. <laughs> Oh, I'm not worried. There's going to be a so group of bodybuilders type of porn. Lot. That's a weird type of porn Webster's into. Watching <laughs> bodybuilders suck their thumbs and cry. <laughs> Thank you. Didn't Thank know you were going to get on the fetish way. talk. Yeah. Time. Yeah. So okay. that, it's real. But go ahead. Expand. The, yeah. So, so the bodybuilder, um, you know, he, he may be doing it for a different reason. So there's still mm -hmm. this balance and we're looking for balance. But the, to the person that isn't the type A, um, that we love, I would highly recommend just trying this. Mm. Trying to see if you feel a little bit more powerful. And it's not to... Uh, to inject your will on people, but it's to admit um, your passion, uh, and I guarantee you, you're going to come alive, and you're going to find other people similar to you, and you're going to begin to form these relationships that you maybe wouldn't have found yourself in mm -hmm. previously. So, talking about where where to begin with everything that we're discussing today, maybe it's too intimidating to try to overcome a fear. Maybe it's too, too intimidating to be part of a tribe. To be go to go to a boot camp. Maybe it's too int intimidating just to change anything that takes away from your current norm. 
And so the takeaway that I see that may be the e easiest to implement, even for the people with a fixed mindset, is to stand for two minutes with your arms way over your head, peacocking is what it's called. Like you just won the Olympics. Like you just won an Olympic event or like Wonder Woman with your hands on your hips, just stand there. Don't have to think of anything. Just stand there for two minutes and do it every single day of your life because from, from that point, you can even do it before the gym if you go to the gym yeah. or before any anything. And once you gain reward, you can then expand upon it. But I think that's probably the best lesson I, I intimidating. Agree. What yeah. are you, you guys? That's a great starting point. Completely. Start with that and then go to then go to the tribe and then start then try to go to the right. whatever else you want to achieve yeah, from see, there. And see how much but it has to be something that excites you. Sure. There, there's still suffering and do, and and finding this this good re release and return from the pain that you're you're trying to experience, but it can't just, if you hate getting on the stair stepper yeah, the stair stepper can return, but there's probably something else that you can have fun with also yeah. that's not just, you know, right. putting the worst 20 minutes on you. It's not pain for pain. Dave, thanks for coming pain. in today. You're coming in next week. We have a topic that's sure to raise the hair on everybody's uh, neck next week. Uh, when it comes to defining an athlete, some of you may be pissed off that we're going to say some people are just not really athletic or they're not considered an athlete or they're, maybe they're not fit. Who knows? But we're going to have a really fun round table next week. David Barbora. Dr. Webster, Mo, myself, and you calling in to discuss what this is. Right now, I'd like to say be brave by learning what your body needs by feeding it properly. Genetic Direction understands your desire to break free from gene generic programs by offering personalized solutions designed specifically for your DNA. So research-based science can tell you the best foods, supplements, and exercise routine that's best for your body, your genetic makeup, Visit GeneticDirection.com, download the free informational guide called Seven Ways Your DNA Influences Your Ability to Lose Weight, GeneticDirection.com. Guys, thanks for being here. We'll talk thanks, with you George. next week. Thank you.